morning, everyone. Welcome to Online Seller UK podcast. This morning, we've got Timo from Dragonfly, and Timo will be discussing or telling us um, about your buying and selling your Amazon business. Good morning, Tim. Yeah, hi. Very, very nice to, to meet you here. Um, and uh, that's exactly what we do. So we help uh, Amazon sellers uh, sell their Amazon-based business. Um, we're doing that in Germany, uh, but uh, UK is not that far away. So if you're a UK-based seller, uh, you, you, can, you can get in touch with us as well. Yeah. So do you want to uh, mention you know, how, how, many, how many years you've been doing this and um, w- what sort of businesses have you bought and sold? And is this something that somebody should even think about? Is it worth trying to do that? Yeah, definitely. So we've been doing this for the last three years uh, in, in Germany and our deals, uh, they, they vary between when we started, uh, you know, they, they started at uh, 10,000 euros. Now we have a minimum deal size of 200,000 and wow. the largest deal uh, currently uh, is 15 million euros. So this okay. is uh, quite a big one. Uh, but uh, yeah, usually like if, if, if you're, um, you know, the expected uh, uh, deal size is above 200,000, then uh, that's that's pretty much uh, interesting uh, for us. Uh, if it's smaller, uh, then we can probably give you some tips uh, what you can do to make it bigger uh, yeah. so that it's worthwhile for, for you and, and for us. And, okay, um, so who actually buys this business? And, you know, what sort of um, audience there are? Yeah, that depends on the deal size, obviously. So like in Germany, if uh, you, you can get uh, easy financing for up to uh, 100,000 euros, uh, so it's it's government back. They they uh, back eighty percent of the loan, so the, the the banks give them easily. So these will be like corporate dropouts. Um, so if the, if they have some money, if the seller uh, gives them a loan as well, plus they get one hundred thousand um, from the government. So th- that that means they can do these corporate dropout. They can they can finance you know a few hundred thousand uh, euro deals, and there are also a lot of deals of that size uh, on, on the marketplace. Now, if you the, the other kind of buyers are, are institutional. And for them, they usually have large funds, um, so they have a lot of money, and that's a problem for them because uh, they can only buy uh, large deals. Uh, so they, they would not be considering, you know, like a uh, two hundred thousand euro deal uh, because if you have, you know, I don't know, like one hundred million euros to deploy, uh, you yeah. you can't do it in in one hundred thousand euro increments. So these okay. would be at the upper end, uh, and because there are less sellers equally, you know, the, and they have more money. So yeah. that means that the, the price, uh, so the multiple uh, for those uh, goes up. So that's, uh, if, if you can make it as big as possible, um, yeah. I would say 1 million uh, EBIT uh, would, be, would be nice, uh, that would be of interest. You, you, uh, you, know, you get rewarded twice, you know, like first the, the base is larger and the multiple is also larger. So there's mm-hmm. one thing, you just make it as big as possible. Okay, cool. So, you know, if my business is making a very profitable, venture and it's been doing quite well for the last five years in terms of profit why would i even consider selling that yeah so uh, there there are many reasons um so but i think the best reason is if the buyer and the seller if they are um, a, a good fit so that is if the seller has something that the buyer does not have or does not want to do and you have to think about like if if, if you run a business um, you know, if, if you have a business and you, you're, you're the, the, the single operator, you have no employees, that's different from a business that has 10 employees. And a business that has 100 employees is also different than a business that has 10 employees. Mm-hmm. So if you, you, maybe you make the business bigger and bigger and bigger, but at some point, either you, you're not capable of yeah. continuing continue to grow it, you know, because it's, not, it's beyond your, your skill set. And yeah. that doesn't mean that you, you can never learn how to do it, but maybe you choose yeah. that you don't want to. So that's an, an ideal yeah. scenario. You, you, you build a company, you hire 10 people, and now you mm-hmm. sell it to somebody who, who is comfortable um, managing a team of 100 people. So because you simply wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do so with your lifestyle and so on. Um, and then also other reasons. I mean, like sometimes, um, you know, this, this amount of money makes a big difference in, in the lives of the, the seller. Um, mm-hmm. So that, that could be, sometimes it's uh, for health reasons. Um, yeah. So you cannot continue the business. Mm-hmm. Um, and other reasons is if, if you have multiple partners, uh, if, if they don't get along anymore, 
uh, then it's always a, a, an option to to sell. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they have good reasons other than you know like I mean what I do also have to say is that um, so far we had forty listings um, yeah. over uh, over the lifetime since we've been doing it, and we had um, more than four hundred people who um, filled out our um, our form. So you know so the truth is that like ninety percent of uh, people who intend to sell will not sell. So most ah, businesses okay. are not in a sellable condition, and that's exactly what you said. It's like, why would you want to sell it? Well, the reason they want to sell it is because it's it's not it's not working out, you know. Uh, okay. And, but then there are those ten percent where it does actually have like a, a you know a good business and it's working out, but they do have their reasons. Okay. So are you saying you go through when somebody um, talks to you, starts talking to you, you go through a particular checklist of things that. A, a business should have before you even considering pricing that business right yeah so it's a marketplace so like uh, we like we, they in the end it's up to the buyer and the seller but yeah. it's it's always very obvious um that it's not working out so mm -hmm. we can tell like in a couple of minutes that it's just never going to work um okay. at this time it doesn't mean that you can never sell it it does not mean that maybe you can sell it but not with yeah. us uh, yeah. Because uh, you know some people are interested in, in those kind of businesses, but uh, you know you'd have to get like a much lower multiple, um, yeah. and we wouldn't recommend it. So we would recommend that you put in some some more time, you know, put in twelve more months and yeah. make it so it's in a in a good condition, and then you'll you'll be rewarded much more. Okay, okay. So um, so so when you try and negotiate this uh, deal, what are the key things that a a seller, you know, as a account holder, should consider to talk during the negotiation. What are the key, you know, two or three things? You mean the key two or three things uh, to to get the highest possible price, or that's right, that's right. Yeah, okay. Or the best yeah, possible so, price. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so um, one thing is size, and I already said why that is the case. It's because of different uh, types of buyers. Yeah. Um, then the next thing is. Um, um, yeah, there, there are many things. It's not like any particular order, but I can just go through them. What's important? Yeah. So, uh, you have to have your books in order. So, like, if you have no proper accounting, yeah. it's never going to work, right? So, yeah. you have to start with that um, because the buyer will, will want to do their due diligence and like some screenshots from Amazon. And if this is, and, and even if you have some some software like like a seller board, you know, which I really like, it yeah. gives you a PL, but it's not good enough. <laughs> you need okay. like a, yeah. some, some some sort of proper um, accounting. Um, then if you focus on too many things, buyers don't like it. So it, if you have five different brands that, it, that are completely not rel uh, related to each other, okay. they don't like it, you'll have, you get a lower multiple. And if you focus on one brand and if it truly is a brand, that means uh, yeah. people are willing to pay a premium uh, yeah. for more, pretty much the same product, but because it has that brand. So like the, the brand is, is a big thing uh, yeah. and also the focus. And if you, own an audience that will be a, a big big asset so if because then maybe you even get a strategic buyer um, okay. that wants to access that audience diversification is also an issue um, so if it's only amazon that could mm -hmm. be negative um, diversification is good but yeah if you diversify um there's like a 30% uh, rule. It's not a real yeah. rule, but like uh, you know, like if 30% of your sales are on another channel, that would yeah. be a bit uh, a yeah. plus. But if you have like uh, uh, five different channels, you do Amazon, eBay, Etsy. I don't know. You do like five five different channels, mm -hmm. but 95% of your sales are on Amazon. That's not yeah. even diversified. You know, that's just a yeah. complicated business. So in that case, yeah. it's actually better uh, if if you do uh, only Amazon. Okay. Um, okay so. Maybe I forgot something, but uh, yeah, pretty much these, these yeah. are like things you can consider. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we've got pretty limited time and you've given us as much details uh, as you could really. So no, thank you for your time, Timo. And um, so if somebody needs to contact you, Timo, how do they find or where do they find you? Yeah, just go on our website, uh, dragonflip.com, and uh, we're just translating it. So I don't know when you publish it, but you know, we'll, we'll make sure we have an English version up and yeah. running uh there will be a contact form and uh then you can you can contact us and uh we'll, we'll get back to you and uh you know, tell you how much business is worth if you, if you can sell it and so on yeah no thanks very much also for everyone to know timo will be with us in the uk 
on the March the 13th, 2020 uh, for our Amherst UK. So if you've got any business to sell or can they contact you if they want to buy as well, Timo? Of course, yeah. 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 So if you've got anything to any of your business to Amazon business to buy or sell, visit us um, in Manchester, March the 13th, 2020 at Amherst UK and Timo will be with us for the day. Thank you very much, everyone. All the best.